What do you do with those people? Well, 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 Deandra. Would you look at that? <laughs> Frank? D, what you two have discovered today is what is most commonly referred to as a glory hole. <laughs> you think there's some perv coming in here to watch me make? What's up guys, I'm Jacob Suggs and welcome back to another video! So for those who don't know, I'm a huge fan of B-movies. There's just something so schlocky about the feel of watching something so low budget that can get away with so much that I can't even explain how much I love it and how much it means to me. Over the summer, two of my best friends and I started something up to where we'd just find old B-movies on Amazon Prime to watch, and honestly, those times were some of the highlights of my year thus far. We called it Movies and Milkshakes, since we all usually got milkshakes before watching the films, and if you've got some film pals and you're looking for something fun to do on a weekend, I really recommend this. <laughs> I saw the trailer for Bad Robots Overlord, I was really, really excited to check it out. I mean, it looked like an absolute blast and seemed to acknowledge exactly what it was trying to be. I mean, when you set your trailer to ACDC's Hell's Bells, you pretty much know what kind of movie you're marketing. And after watching Overlord, which I really loved it, something stood out to me. It's got all of those B-movie vibes that I expected, but something was different an actual script with incredible writing. Sure, the film's got Nazi zombies, explosions, and more, but at its core has a great main theme about power and playing God. So let's talk about Overlord and how it does exactly what it needs to do, and a little bit more. <laughs> Spoilers for Overlord going forward, but if you're watching this video then I assume that you've watched the film already and am just looking for some explanation or another analysis, whatever, just spoilers ahead. <laughs> now obviously the whole life-death theme is pretty prevalent throughout the entire film, with the serum that the Nazis find under the church in France being the key to all of the weirder elements that the film contains. And right off the bat, I thought it was pretty interesting how the Nazis found this serum under a church. Think about it for a minute. The ultimate evil finds a key to eternal life under a church. The devils find salvation under a place of worship. That might sound really pretentious, and that's because there was no other way that I could write it to where it wouldn't have been pretentious. So there you have it. <laughs> Believe me, I, I tried. <laughs> Another thing that I found really interesting was the duality between Corporal Ford and Captain Waffner. The two are clear foils for one another and are a parallel reflection of the other. They're essentially the extremes of both sides, with Waffner being the extremist Nazi, which is kind of ironic saying it out loud since Nazis aren't that great of people if you're asking me, and Ford is an extremist that will do anything to help America come out victorious, even if it isn't necessarily morally right. Though as you know if you've seen the film, Ford comes around and ultimately sees what the greater good actually is. When Corporal Ford and his fellow Americans capture Waffner in Chloe's home, Ford uses a rope to tie him up. He then beats him relentlessly for information, but Waffner gives him absolutely nothing except for cursing him out. And later on in the third act, Ford ends up in the same situation when Waffner hangs Ford's body up using a metal hook attached to a ceiling. He then beats Ford, but this time Ford does the exact same thing and doesn't tell Waffner anything except for cursing him out. Both men are quiet for the sake of taking their information to the grave, which is kind of ironic when you consider that both eventually end up taking the serum later on in the film. And that's where the two characters differentiate for me personally, whereas Waffner continues his crusade to create this thousand year army on the surface with the serum, Ford decides to quite literally bury the serum underground and let the concept of reanimating dead people die. Whereas Ford's character overall experiences a more positive change and goes from being one dimensional and hardcore to being more fleshed out and becomes more metaphorically alive by questioning ethics within this entire situation, 
Waffner isn't quite the same, obviously. Waffner takes the serum when he's still alive, but instead of coming back to life, he seemingly becomes more and more dead as the film's final act progresses onward. This all starts when half of his face gets blown off by Ford, and he only becomes more and more lifeless as he attempts to play God and seek eternal salvation through the power that his men have found. Only Ford sees the truth, whereas Waffner, the two-faced Nazi, I'm not even using that as a metaphor, is revealed for what he truly is, a monster corrupted by power, war, and all of the other hateful things that the Nazis have done in the war in an attempt to come out victorious. I just thought that this was really interesting, and honestly the characters and writing in Overlord are really what elevated the film for me personally. The film has all of the B-movie charm that you could ask for, but like I said, I was really surprised at how tight and focused the script was, especially with these two characters. My biggest concern going in was if the film could juggle the task of being both a war film and a mysterious B-movie zombie flick at the same time, and to my surprise, it actually somehow managed to pull it off. I think that a lot of praise should go to the director Julius Avery, who did an absolutely phenomenal job directing this film, and just like some other directors who have worked with Bad Robot in the past, he hasn't directed much other than this film. I'm not kidding, there's some shots in this film that are absolutely great, and from minute one with that incredible opening that everybody has talked about when discussing this film, I was completely sucked in and completely there from start to finish. So hats off to Julius Avery for making one pretty awesome flick that completely blew me away and blew my mind in all the best possible ways. It's got gore, action, and mystery on the surface, but has more than enough substance underground to give this film even more life. See what I did there? <laughs> That all being said, have you seen Overlord, and if so, what did you think about it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And as always, I'm Frame by Frame. Remember the name. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.